So like this limo right here, you can use it at the restaurant, yeah. So like people that get um, onion allergies, mm -hmm. try to taste the texture of that. It's not too strong. It's pretty light texture, yeah. So Definitely. you can make, we'll make our onaga dish bitter. with this. Yeah. And we're only cutting halfway down. Uh. Mm. Hawaiian cooking to me is utilizing what Hawaii is offering. Sure. Flavor right out of the ocean. I'm gonna remove the eyeball, natural gelatin in it. Flavor, man, it's it's there. You just gotta find it. Perfect with fish, like a white flesh fish, or onaga. Oh yeah, super aromatic. To me, Hawaiian cooking is using that animal or using that product and bringing out what that flavor is. Amazing flavors that fake Hawaii cuisine covered up. Why cover up what we have? That's, that's my thought. That's how I look at food and I say, why cover it up? I was inspired by um, Chef Kevin's dishes. You know, he takes a twist on each and every single ingredient. You know, he uses like a French technique with very local, very comforting food. He has a passion for his craft and it comes out through his dishes. You know, growing up, all my days off of school or home, I would be with my dad hunting, cutting pig down and we tried fishing for a little while. I loved it for some reason. It was peaceful. It was not being home fighting with somebody. Yeah, so it was nice. It was calming. Our family didn't really get along growing up, uh, like a lot of families. My father was, he's from the military. He was a captain in the fire department, so he was hard. He was a tough dad. My grandmother, she would always cook for us. This mixer of Portuguese, Hawaiian, Food. Pork and beans with ketchup and brown sugar and hot dog. That's, that's food, man. That's love. After high school, I got in my truck and drove up to Kaina Point. Stayed there for, you know, it was about two years in my truck and I kind of did my own thing. I remember like it was yesterday, pitch black, and I was just walking, crying, and it was, it was one of those those times where it was like, you know, this is it. This is my bottom, this is my low. I felt my grandmother there. All I remember was I felt happy and I knew what I wanted to do, so. I remember in culinary school, we used to do reports on chefs in Hawaii and, and you know, Alan Wong and Roy's and Chef Mavro. And I said, okay, well, Chef Mavro won a lot of awards. I'm gonna work for the best. Went over to Chef Mavro's. This guy came out and he was sweeping. Um, so I was like, oh, is your chef in? He's like, yeah. Could I talk to him, please? I I'm the chef. I said, yeah, I, I need a job. I'm looking for a job. I don't got a job for you. All right. Came back the next day. No, I don't got a job for you, man. You gotta stop coming back here. I kept doing that for weeks. And sure enough, one day, dishwasher quit. You know, worked for two weeks dishwashing, didn't get a paycheck, I'm like, wait. Don't we get paid every two weeks? You know, and uh, bit my tongue and I just kept at it. While I was washing his dishes, I was watching everybody in the kitchen. It was a French kitchen. Everything was spoons, everything was butter, everything was... It was an orchestra being conducted by Chef Mauro. That's what it was. Next thing I know, so-and-so quit. Chef, I got it. I know how to do his station. My first day as a cook, you know, I, I was in the kitchen when the chef was yelling and swearing and, you know, the, the hard hours, all day, all night, it's all a positive to me. You know, it's made me who I am. We're gonna go over there. But I like, I like looking at my fern real fast. Let's 
So this is our hapu fern. One thing I always like to do when I harvest it though is cut it at an angle and kind of let that uh, bud try to grow again. Regrowth. You know? That's the stuff that makes your throat itchy, so you take it off. Good things about this is salads. Everyone makes salads with the top. So when we go back to the kitchen, we go hapu pu fern uh, salad. Nice. We're in such a great atmosphere to get foraged ingredients from the forest and from the ocean. And I really took that from Chef Kevin because, especially in Hawaii, sustainability is very important to us. Being from Hawaii, I'm not going to use parsley. I'm not going to use cilantro or whatever. I'm going to use what we do here is like ho'io ferns. When I'm harvesting a fern or whatever it may be, I'm looking for that flavor and I'm using that as a swap out for whatever Westerner flavors might have came in. A lot of chefs, they bring in the local ingredients. It's already been processed. You're not seeing what it looks like in the ground, you know, how to actually get to that processed product and then make it into food. And it turned into more of an educational thing for me. Why cover up what we have? Now I get to teach these guys about certain things that I didn't know, you know, um, and we learned together. I got um, some ono from the longliners. Ono is one of my favorite fish when you eat it right out of the ocean. It has so much fat, so much oils. The thing about longline fishing that a lot of people don't know is that they do fish in deeper waters. And what that does is it creates a colder climate, which creates a fattier fish. So if you want a fattier fish, which fat equals flavor, that's the fish you want. You know, they're, they're deeper, they're colder, and it's more flavorful. I'm gonna remove the eyeball. There's an ink sac on the inside as well. So we like to use it for pastas and risottos. Um, right there, all that fat, goodness, and then the gelatin sac in the eyeball itself. The long liners, they know how to catch a fish and cool down a fish and keep it at its proper temperatures, get it to the auction block, get it to the buyers the correct way. I like to get the fatty fish. We also like to do opa. Opa has a fat layer on it. You can use that fat layer for cooking our beautiful colored ahi, our fatty colored ahi. We're not really sure on the high standards of fish um, that we're getting when it's not the long liners. We need them, we rely on them when we're cooking our high-end uh, dishes. Ev, did you pour the, the fish eye broth yet? Yeah. I'm the kind of chef who wants to go out and fish and catch my own product. But the one thing is that I can't catch 200, 300 pounds of fish every week. It's up to the long liners to, to supply us. As a chef, as a chef community and a restaurant community, you realize that none of that fish goes to waste and we don't have enough of the fish to supply our, our island. We all have the passion to cook, but he gives us the freedom to create and he pulls it all together in the end. <laughs> We're basically family, you know, in the kitchen. I'd never want to be progressing without my guys or my team or my, my friends or my family. And, you know, when I became a chef, you know, I started doing really well. You know, my parents have never came to my restaurant, not once. Just recently, it was the first time my dad you know, told me he was proud of me, of what I'm doing, you know, and it was, it was, uh, it was super nice to hear, you know. I always like to, to bring people up with me because I know how hard it is to, to get where you want to get on your own, yeah? You know, if longline fishing stopped in Hawaii, you're gonna be seeing grocery stores full of frozen fish. We're not gonna have what we grew up with, and that's not who we are. We want the best, we have the best. We're not just cooking here. Food in Hawaii is, is not just food, it's who we are.